Hello. Hello. Hi. Okay. I have to find a proper spot. Well, thank you, thank you for that warm welcome. I see that the lunch kicked in. Okay. Let's see if that works. It does. Well, thank you for repairing this. Hi. So, um, I was already introduced, but I'm going to do it again anyhow. So, my name is Jakub, and I run an uh, Outriders a journalism startup based out of Warsaw. And basically, we do four core projects, but what we do is we do stories and we help others to do great stories, sometimes with us, sometimes not. And today, I want to talk to you about stories versus narratives, how we, how we can make sure that the, uh, that the data we are embedding into a story is actually used for good. So, it all starts with hope. You know, uh, for a long time, open data movement, freedom of information movement, and the overlapping communities believed that the more data there will be, the more informed our society will be, and the more happy we will be. You know, and we've spent, I think, over a decade working and working about scraping, um, standardizing, releasing the data. This is just one example of World Bank, which currently offers over 21,000 data sets. And this is only one data provider among, I don't know, thousands or millions. So much data to use, uh, to use for us and uh, do something with it. But, you know, then reality started to kick in. And that's always a problem, you know. We start with those big dreams, and then, well, it doesn't always go as we would have wanted it to, if to go. Okay, here is my time, perfectly. So, the other thing which started, uh, th that's one, one thing for open data, but the other thing which started to happen is that, you know, there is also a lot of data gathered on us. So, not only we, we have a lot of data which we can use, but we, there is a lot of data gathered on us in a way that the business model, which used to be, especially for media, um, free to use if you click and see our ads is more and more changed into free to use if we can gather data on you and do whatever thing, you know, create this nice, beautiful environment uh, where we can better target adver advertising and make you and make you uh, buy things we want and so on and so on. All that together on one thing, we have this huge data, I believe, overload. There's so, so, so much data, but it's somehow not reaching the goal and hope we have had. And on the other end, the other thing is that we are more and more like losing simply the trust towards various institutions and among them being media pushes me into thinking that we have to change many things which we are doing. And I started to think, to think what are the like, three main problems currently with, with data, basically. So one thing is there is a lot of focus on publishing and actually on the pre-publishing phase. You know, there is a lot of this uh, done when it comes to scraping, collecting, then cleaning the data, then standardizing them, then releasing, and then we release the data set in like, well, where are you people, you know? Where are you? Why aren't you using it? What's happening? The audience is somewhere there. The other problem there is, is goal. You know, um, we're not telling people what to think. We are giving people more information so they can, uh, so they can, you know, have better, uh, they can take better decisions, that's our hope. But then we have some people who take parts of the data and start to use them against us. Now look at this example of narratives. This is from 2016 when NATO was doing um, um, army maneuvers around, um, around Baltic Sea. And this is um, an analysis of Russian, um, Russian language media based in Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania and Poland. Now I'm not sure if you can read those. Can you read those uh, things here? Yes, the Baltic states are paranoid. NATO is unwelcome. I cannot read it. Wait, hold on, maybe here. NATO cannot protect the Baltic states. So you can see those nicely formulated um, headlines which are circulating. And then the, we can see that if some narratives are not, are not working or are losing attraction, you know, among readers, they develop new ones. But the, the whole, they have a goal, you know. They want to create mistrust. They want to create... Um, this illusion that, that NATO is doing something hostile, that, that, and so on and so on. And they are using media to spread that information and we can track how it goes. And the last thing is um, lies, you know. Good lie is almost true. And I want to I wanna sh show you an example of, this is a fact. 66% of asylum seekers coming to Europe in 2015, during the biggest migration wave, were male. This is another fact which applies a little bit of logic into this thinking. So 
66% of asylum seekers are male, and actually ISIS fighters are like mostly male as well, you know? And then what, 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 we, what is the effect, you know? They are coming for us. So it is this why we wanted the, to release the first data set about migration, you know? And suddenly we have this, uh, we have this, um, we have this narrative, um, uh, s uh, which is like, <laughs> not, not true, but, <laughs> But, you know, try to fight with it, you know? It's very well constructed, in a way. That's what also uh, makes it so hard to later on even debunk, to convince people. Because we start with truth. And then we apply some logic, and then boom, there is an effect. So, the main difference between stories versus narratives is that uh, with stories, we, kinda, we, we, we have established beginning. The story begins, and with narrative, there is established ending. So, especially with narratives, we exactly know what we <laughs> want to say, what we want people to think. And thus, we take the data, we take the facts, we take the whole process, and we try to combine it so it serves our thesis. With stories, we have no idea where, where, where the story will take us, you know, what is the ending. The whole purpose of doing stories is actually to seek uh, to go through this process and seek the ending and then publish it and keep the audience informed. But it's very hard to fight with narratives. So the question is, what do we do? Are you there? Hello? Yeah, okay, awesome. Just checking. So I decided to try something with you. I have six examples for you. And I decided that for some of them, I'm not going to use the word data, but I'm going to use the word hinkali. <laughs> and all the visualizations will be also hinkali. So, first thing we can do is to really think about the distribution of hinkali. You know, how do we make sure that our hinkali reaches the audience we would want it to reach? You know, so we have our little hinkali ready, hinkali set to be released. There is the audience, you know, and let's look at what people, like, what happens, um, why usually narrative spreads, spread, you know, because sometimes someone makes a mistake, you know, I like something, I heart something, you know, I have people who trust me, who follow me, and then they see, oh, Jakub actually believes, you know, that the dogs can fly, so maybe it's true. You know, so um, and then it starts to spread. You know, it's all about like if you, if we look at the, the creation of narratives, it's all about tr trying to find the one person, one account, which from from where the whole um, spreading started. So there is an example. Like so, what what you can do is you, you can try to be before you release your data, you can try to find people who are actually interested in this data and ask them to play with it. You know, release something with it to their community. And there is a great guy in Poland. He is actually a former politician. He's a former vice prime minister. He's, he's called Janusz Piechaczyński. And when he left politics or he lost the elections, whatever, uh, uh, he started at, like he started to only tweet data, and he became like a phenomenon. You know, he was like he's tweeting really like really interesting data, sometimes uh, funny data, but he is, he has a huge fan base, and I have never seen so much data on, on my social feed as his screenshots of, of, of his tweets. So that is one thing you can do. Now, the second thing, oh, there's more Hinkali, reaches our audience. Now, oh, sorry, not question your data, but question your Hinkali. So the, the second thing is, you know, narratives, they run on like, um, they run on the uh, this established whatever thing they want to say. So the other thing is, you know, uh, get when you release your data set, your data, whatever, um, your Kinkali. I'm sorry, you see, this is really tricky. Your Kinkali. When you release your Kinkali, have people question it. You know, is it really a Kinkali? Does it come 60% out of meat? You know, are there herbs inside? Have people ask more questions about your data set, you know? Have, it, have them doubt it, but that engages them into this. That creates links to other data sets, Hinkali sets, and, uh, <laughs> you know, that brings you basically more Hinkali love, you know, to Hinkali set, you know? Just question it, because that allows you to reach out to other people and um, th that they actually browse through, browse through your Hinkali set. 
Third thing is basically we are trying to build the Kinkali movement. You know, we are trying to get engaged community. So let's look back at the, like the process of working on Hinkali sets as it is used um, in many things and try to change it, you know. We have this. We spend so much time, you know, working on this cleaning, waiting for the Hinkali to be released. Why don't we squeeze this face, bring the audience here, but let's try to, you know, we have, the, you have our Hinkali set ready. But what happens, is there like a laser thing here? No. So uh, what happens if we actually take the audience and bring it more to the process, you know? Why wait? Why wait for the process to be? Let's have them more engaged into actually collection of the data. Let's have them uh, more engaged into cleaning the data. Maybe not scraping, but still just going through this data set, asking, Hinkali said, asking more, <laughs> asking more questions, you know, creating links to others, because that may actually give us more Hinkali, you know, more good Hinkali. And that, if you get more people in this process, you know, before we release, we already have a huge Hinkali community. Once we release, we have a Hinkali movement. Okay. So, uh, now, um, it's also nice sometimes to have fun with data, as I just did. But sometimes it isn't. So I'm very sorry. Uh, but from now on, no more Hinkali jokes. Um, the other thing which we, which we can have, I showed you an example in the beginning uh, of we have a data set about migration. There is part of it being taken, and which creates a, a false narrative. What can we do with it? We can actually try to fight this with data as well. This is an, a, a video. It's going to be in Polish. You can turn the music down. Turn the music down. Thank you. So this is a video done by uchodźce.info, uh, which is like refugees.info, uh, um, a Polish website which provides lots of data around migration. This is actually a video about te terrorism um, data. And what they're trying to do is whenever they see narratives, they're trying to actually really provide even more data, which to add more context to it. And um, uh, like, so the here, here we have data, here, here we have narrative, and then we are trying to use data to combat this narrative. So this is another thing which you can use, and we, we can be ready for this. You know, kind of assume, especially that if we are working with data, which we know this is like sensitive politically, and it can be misused by some in order to generate some, um, some facts which would serve some site, to be ready to actually do this. Fifth thing is add more context to data. And this is... Just what you see here is four soldiers. This is Mosul in Iraq, April and May this year. Uh, they are members of the Iraqi army who is um, uh, fighting the battle of Mosul, um, trying to take back the city from Daesh forces. Now, it's just before they enter the building. They are cleaning the buildings. Um, just before they enter the building. And what you don't know, what changes the, like, the whole thing is that in, in half an hour, out of those four soldiers, some will be very seriously wounded and some will die. So this totally changes the perception of where we started. And the last thing which we can do is when we release a data set, we try to add some stories to it, show more, which kind of accumulates everything, what I was just saying. So this is a story which I'm currently wo uh, working on, uh, work on. I have no idea if I'm ever going to publish it. But the story starts here. Uh, here, meaning it's five kilometers from Lesbos Beach, from a place where most of the migrants who travel from Turkey, they, which they want to enter Europe, they, uh, if, if, they, if, they go, uh, if they go to Greece, they usually land on Lesbos, or the island of Chios. And what you're seeing are items, uh, lots of items, uh, which are left on the beaches. And there used to be much more, much more of those, especially in 2015 and early 2016. Now, think of it as a data set about migration. You know, you see a lot. But then you can start to go after items. Which, start to, which may give you a story um, which will show you more general overview, which, which can be more appealing just, to, you know, just instead of giving um, only data. Maybe 
What is the story behind it? Why they use it? Uh, how much does it cost? You know, some of, the, some of the life vests here are fake. Like, they are not proper life jackets. Life, life jackets? That's a, that, I think it is. Uh, they, they take you down rather than take you up. But uh, asylum seekers buy them uh, from, uh, from smugglers. So, and you can see that if you don't have much money, you don't need to have the, like this is, um, what do you put in a, in a, like a wheel? In a, how do you call it? So, exactly. I, I didn't hear, but I hope you heard. Uh, uh, so there's like, once you start to take every piece, you see that there is so much questions around it, and that can lead us to a story. And the story which I am working on, which I'm trying to also see, um, like, take this, this huge data set and try to hide it in the background behind the story. And there are sometimes items which make some, ma can make people, some people very sad, but the story which I'm working on starts with this. It's a document. It's a document, <coughs> it's a second page of it. I'm not showing you this on the first page because of, uh, I want to, um, uh, it belongs to a person. It belongs to a person, it belongs to um, a person uh, born in Afghanistan who, um, uh, like, what I already know is that that person reached Lesbos. And that that person, a couple of years back, uh, entered Turkey, and that document was issued in that country. Um, and I'm trying to, for past, I don't know, since May, I'm trying to find that person, um, to see whether that person survived it, whether, um, where, where that person is. And I'm just, I'm not giving you, because I haven't yet found that person. Um, and I have no idea whether that person will wish to be a hero of the story. So this is why I'm not giving you any more details. Um, because I know the name and, and it's on the first page, which I'm not showing you here. Um, but among all of those things, after like hours of just, I don't know, looking for something, I found this. And I want to tell this, the story of that person. How? What happened? I mean, what, why left? Um, uh, why she or he left Afghanistan, why, uh, how was the road, how, many, how much time and why so many years from Afghanistan to Turkey and then to, then to Lesbos and so on and so on and so on. But it is, we have this whole thing and behind that story I can tell everything was behind that um, data and also make it really appealing for the audience. So taking all of those things, uh, taking all of those things into, into a circle, you may use all of them. You may use only one method. You may find and seek different methods, but it all adds up to one thing, is that we have to bring audience more into various processes, whether it's data production, whether it's journalism process, like story production and so on, to have them more engaged into this, because that is one of the best ways to actually ensure that people um, will trust us more and that we can actually start to have, um, well, work and rebuild the trust and that hope we have in the beginning. Thank you.